Pastor. Praise the Lord. The voice of the final day, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord has been doing wonderful things since we came. The first day, second, third, fourth, fifth, and this sixth day, final. Sickness, final. Disease, final. Dominion of the enemy, your life, final. Crying, final. Weeping, final. All your sorrows are taken away today. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe and everything in between, total freedom, supernatural freedom coming to you today in Jesus' name. I will receive. I will receive. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, what you still do. And we thank you for the great, great things you are doing in every life. Salvation, healing, deliverance, deliverance and miracle, signs and wonders. Lord, I pray on this final day you glorify yourself in the life of everyone in jesus name miracle for everyone salvation for everyone healing for everyone deliverance for everyone here and in all the other places we are connected all over the world in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Tonight as we come to the final night, we're still talking about the Lamb. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. And it's because of that Lamb. Because of His sacrifice. Because of the substitution and because of the salvation it brings to us. That's why we come to celebrate the supernatural freedom that he has given every one of us tonight. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 9. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, and stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands. That was John. John the beloved. He was alone because all the other apostles had gone to glory and it remained him alone. And the people around him, the powers that were, they took him and put him in an island alone by himself. And the thought must have been coming I'm alone. No other believer. I'm alone. No other person holding to the faith was delivered unto the saints. Alone. All of a sudden, the Lord moved him out of the earth and moved him in the spirit to the coming of the Lord. And then he saw something. Number one, not him alone. Not him alone. Number two. The children of Israel had thought that when they got to heaven, they'll see Abraham, 
they'll see Isaac, they'll see Jacob, and then the rest of the people will be Enoch and Abel and Noah and Joseph and, uh, and Moses and only the Israelites. They thought heaven was for one nation. All of a sudden, John, looking at the multitude, number one, I am not alone. You are not alone. Myriads of people, numberless people, uncountable people, which no man could number. And then it said, of all nations, not only Israel going to heaven, not only the white going to heaven, not only the blacks going to heaven, not only Africa going to heaven, not only Asia going to heaven, not only America going to heaven, not only the oceanic people going to heaven, not only people who are far away from me going to heaven, I am going there. I said, I am going there. You know, some people used to say, it's unfortunate I'm born in this nation because now people in this nation, they don't go to heaven. It says of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, people of our language, people of your language and people of your tribe, all being prepared to go to heaven. And I came out to present the ticket of heaven to you today. And you, by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, by the supernatural freedom coming from the Lord, you will get there. Yeah. I will get there. Yeah. I will see you there. Because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the sacrifice of the Lamb, because of His free grace available for everyone, every tongue, every people, Every kindred, every nation represented there is church before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms of victory in their hands. Look at the last verse there, verse 17. In verse 17, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes from your eyes God himself he'll not tell an angel to do it he'll not tell another man to do it he'll not tell a woman women will be there in heaven but he'll not tell the woman to do it God himself will wipe all tears out of your eyes even today even today God has come down to change your sorrow and sadness and all the trouble in your heart to change it to happiness and gladness tonight even tonight it will wipe all tears from your eyes i'm talking to you today on the multitude of cleansed conquerors consecrated to the land the multitude of cleansed people the people who are conquering and consecrated unto the Lamb, the multitude of cleansed, conquerors, consecrated to the Lamb. We're looking at three things here as we look at the message today. Number one, the way out of transgression and tribulation. The way out where you are now and you are hedged in and you are incarcerated and you are held in captivity by trial by temptation, by trouble, by trauma, by all the things that surround you, there is a way out, you will come out. I saw the picture of a prisoner, and he was holding to the rails or to the poles 
of the wall. But the point is, the door was behind him. And the door had been opened. And he was still facing the same direction he always faced. Holding on to the poles. And then being sorrowful. And being sad. I'm here in the dungeon. And the door was behind him. And the way out of the prison had been made clear. And he was still there. Turn around. You see the open door. The way is open before you tonight. That imprisonment is sin, imprisonment is sickness, imprisonment by Satan, by affliction, by every sin, evil that you are facing that direction and you don't know the way has been opened. The door has been opened. Turn around tonight, you will come out free. Number one, the way out of transgression and tribulation. Number two, the washing for transformation and triumph. You know, tonight, with God on your side, and with you turning to the Lord, He will transform your life. He'll give you triumph. He'll give you victory. Everything that had dominion over your life before, victory has come tonight. Dominion has come tonight. I rejoice with you. You are walking out of this place. A victorious man. A conquering woman. In Jesus name. Number three. Is the wonder of translation to the throne. Translation before the throne. The Lord will lift you up. He will take you on. And your journey will not end in darkness. Your journey will end in a bright light. And then the Lord himself at the time appointed will translate you to glory before the throne of God. I can almost see you there now with the eyes of faith and prophecy. I can see the Lord taking you up, taking you up from your tribe, from your local government, from wherever you are. And it translates you and I see you before the throne forever and ever. You will be in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord from all nations. From all kindreds, from all people, from all languages, he will take us as we believe. As we come to the Lord, he'll bring us before the throne and great will be our joy forever and ever and ever and ever more in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, the way out of transgression and tribulation. We're looking again at Revelation chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 9. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 it said, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude. Now tell me if a great multitude will be there from all nations, educated nations, we are talking about even nations that are rich and wealthy. And all those people, they are coming and they are believing on the Lord. And they are there. Why will you say, I don't know whether I want to believe or not. Are you wiser than millions of people? Are you wiser than billions of people? Are you wiser than the trillions of people? Are you wiser? What have you read? Which university have you gone? That all these nations also did not go there. And they accepted that this is the way out. And this is the way right to the throne of God and you that only finish this level of education and you are saying I'm thinking of it join in multitudes are there innumerable people are there you cannot be wise or wiser than all the myriads of people that will be there in heaven without number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues they stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes 
and palms in their hands. Now, those white robes I need to explain to you. It is not or something, you know, sometimes you are doing your wedding and then you go somewhere and you buy the white robe and you put it on and you look very beautiful. Well, that's good for the marriage here on earth. But you know, Jesus Christ spoke about another kind of marriage. He said a king made marriage for his son and invited people, everyone, anyone, everyone could come, no discrimination, no partiality. And then people came, but they got the white robes made by the king himself for all the people that I invited and this man he also came and he sat down the only challenge is he thought his own white robes made by personal effort and made by people that he knew he thought what he paid was enough and he sat down there and all the other people stood down it's a picture of those who are going to get to heaven at the marriage supper of the lamb and there then the king came and looked at everybody and saw this one full of himself, saw this one that said, I have the best tailor, better than the tailor of heaven. I have the best material, better than the material from heaven. And then he put it on and the king said, French, why are you here without the wedding garment? Salvation is the white robe he's talking about. It's not something you can make by yourself. It's not something you can pay for by yourself. It's not something a pastor can give you. It's not something a denomination can give you. It's not something your religion can give you. This one is made in heaven. And when you put that on, then you feed the occasion and you feed the situation there don't rely on the robe you have for yourself i'm good enough no you're not good enough i have my own white robes that was made at our backyard in our church in our religion no it's not enough you get the one that is coming from the hand of god and it is free by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god the gift of god is coming to you tonight you will not reject you will have i said you will have you will receive and then you put on that robe of righteousness made in heaven angels will look at you and they'll say this is beautiful it's a gift from god our maker and it was sown by the sacrifice of christ they said come on you'll be ready for heaven in jesus name and look at verse 13 verse 13 says in verse 13 it says and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these who are these who are arrayed in white robes and whence came day look at verse 14 in verse 14 and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they which came out of the great tribulation now of great tribulation is saying these are they which came out of the world came out of the world when it said their great tribulation it means great trouble it means great trial it means great temptation it means great problem show me any village any town where people don't go through great trial great problem and great tribulation and great um, heartache is talking about the world the world has 
all these great problems and people run from this village to that village and they meet the same problem they are running from they meet it in that village and then they run from there and they run beyond Africa and even when they get to a place beyond Africa lo and behold the tribulation the trial the temptation the problem and the heartache and the suffering and the sicknesses that we are running away from here in Africa when we get over there we meet that again but the people that will come to the Lord and say no matter where I run to no matter where I get to no matter what education I have no matter what money I have there's great tribulation and trial and trauma and trouble in the world and the only way I can I can be free is to come to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and as you come today it will set you free it will forgive you it will change your life and all that tribulation trial trouble temptation driving you about from tonight you're free i am free say it for yourself i am free he said these are they that came out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb made them white in the blood of the lamb can i tell you something at this time john was seeing this revelation it was already 96, 95, 96 AD. And Christ had died around 30, 34 AD. 60 years have passed. And you know, if you kill an animal and you put the blood on the ground, and uh, you know, after one hour, after two days, the blood is dried. But the blood of Jesus Christ, after one year, still fresh. And after 60 years, still fresh. After 600 years, still fresh. After thousands of years, the blood of Jesus is still fresh because it is not the blood of an animal. It is the blood of the only begotten Son of the Lord. And everyone wanting to get to heaven, everyone wanting salvation can come to the fountain of the blood that is flowing. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not what can wash, wash away my guilt and conscience condemnation nothing but the blood of the lamb and as they came they were made white and their robes of righteousness were made white in the blood of the lamb and today you will also come I say you will come and that same blood that saved that healed that delivered other people that took their guilt away and took their condemnation away that blood will avail for you today how does that happen look at john chapter 14 verse 6 john chapter 14 verse 6 the lord jesus says unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me the father seated on the throne God Almighty on the throne and no one on earth in any nation, in the kindreds, in the tribes, in the tongues, in the various languages, any part of the world, no one comes to the Father and no one will get to that throne except by him. You turn away from darkness, you turn away from everything that is opposed to Christ opposed to the gentle meek lamb opposed to the savior opposed to the goodness of god all the bad things all the evil things all the sinful things everything you turn your back on and you come to the lord and you say i accept you i take you i believe you you are the way out of my transgression and the way out of my tribulation and today will be your day of salvation in jesus name what's the person i'm talking about there today where are you i say where are you god bless you you are there 
heaven has seen you. He'll take you out of your transgression, out of your trial, out of your temptation, out of all those negative things surrounding you. He'll bring you right to the presence of the Heavenly Father. Jesus is that way. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the washing for transformation and triumph. The washing, the cleansing. The purging, the purifying. That you know, sometimes when you have used a plate of food and you are eating your food out of that, and all those uh, crumbs and things, they're sticking to the plate. Now, for another person to use that plate and to put the food in there, that plate has to be washed. What I'm saying is you. Satan had used your hand. Satan had used your eyes. And Satan has used all the parts of your body. Satan had eaten out of that plate. And for God now to use that same hand that same individual and that same life and for God to use this same pledge we have to wash that pledge and sometimes when you are washing that pledge the ordinary water and the soft um, sponge cannot clean everything and we have to have something that will be effective that will take every stain away for another person to use that pledge and you now look at your life look at the dirty language and look at the dirty lifestyle and look at the evil things that they have at dawn and look at the way you have surrendered your body in the nightclub and you and Satan used it well well and now all those crumbs and everything of the use of Satan are dried and stick to your body and to your tongue and to your language and God now says I want to use you I want to possess you. I want to make your life beautiful. Say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. It's not like that. That pledge, that life will be washed by the blood of the Lamb. And the Lord will wash you tonight. He will cleanse you tonight. He'll say, that is clean enough. Give me that pledge. Put my foot there. I can use the plate now because that plate is clean. Your life tonight will be clean. Washed. Purged. Everything will come anew. You see there? You see there? The Lord has seen you. You are the one tonight, the Lord himself will wash you. Look at First Corinthians chapter chapter six and I'm reading from verse nine. First Corinthians chapter six, we're looking at verse nine. It says, Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't you know that this dirty plate cannot be used at the feast of the king in the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of, of themselves with mankind. Then in verse 10, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no, the revilers, nor the extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. What he's saying is, it's not only rice and soup that makes the plate dirty. It's not only gari and uh, whatever that makes the plate dirty. It's not just the food they eat over there and we use this plate. Every nation, everyone using the plate, whatever you have eaten there, whatever kind of food, African food, American food, European food, Asian food, whatever you eat on that plate, 
it has to be washed before you can use it to serve another person whatever you have done against the king and against the kingdom I don't do this I only do this you still need the washing I don't uh, do multiple evil I only do one kind of evil that place still has to be washed and it says in that verse 10 it says they shall not inherit the kingdom of God verse 11 here is the beauty and here is the glory and here is the good news and it says such was some of you but he are washed but she are washed but she are washed am I talking to somebody there but she are washed today it will wash you Tonight, it will cleanse you. And it's the blood. It's the blood of the Lamb. It says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Wonderful. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Tonight, the Lord will cleanse you. You know, we think about mommy. Mommy likes every plate clean, clean. And, you know, we've used, we've used the plates. And mommy wants to serve daddy. And you say, mommy, take the plate. And the mommy looks at it and says, you have washed this once? Yes, mommy, I've washed it. And mommy looks at it and she always finds out that nobody can clean that plate like ourselves. And so we'll take the plate, although you thought you are washing the plate, and mommy will wash that thing again and look at it and look at the back and look at everywhere and is sparkling clean. What I'm saying is sometimes you say, I have washed my plate, I've washed my life. And Jesus said, have you? Yes. And you only washed it. And then Jesus looks at it and he says, look at this stain. Look at this dirt. And look at that mark. And look at that. And Jesus says, now, what you've done is not enough. I turn over a new leaf. And Jesus looked at that and said, what's new in this leaf? This one is not new enough. I have tried. I've cleansed myself. I don't do this again. I don't do this again. I don't smoke. I don't drink. But you do that other thing. And Jesus said, okay, don't worry. What you cannot do do it will do it for you are you there and the lord what you thought you have washed but it's not clean enough for heaven the lord will wash you and the father will say that's all right my only begotten son by his blood the blood that grants us total freedom by that blood he has washed you and you are clean and it says you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God the Lord will take your life over tonight and what you couldn't do by yourself the Lord will do in Jesus name yeah. let me let me show you somebody the name mercy and this uh, mercy, the Lord washed her, cleansed her in a way she couldn't have cleansed herself. And what the Lord has done for beloved sister mercy, the Lord will do for you. That amen is good, but make it better. Let's listen to mercy and let mercy tell us what the Lord did and the Lord cleansed her and the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. My name is Nessie Clement. I, I want to thank the Lord how God changed my life in the crusade. Before I lived a life of sin, I was a sinner. I do all sorts of things. I fornicate, I lie. I do all sorts of things, but during the crusades, I came to the crusades, and the man of God said, anyone that wants to give, if you want to give your life to Christ, you stand up. You want to become a new person, a new man, a new woman, a child of God. 
this is your moment. Just raise up the hand wherever you are. I stood up and they gave me the form I see. Then that was how my life started changing. I went for the new combat class. And there, after that, they asked us to go to a new to banquet hall for the uh, new combat. I went there, they announced something about the water baptism. Then I knew I have to do it because I made up my mind completely I was going to follow Jesus this time around and forget about all what I was doing. So we went for the water baptism. So after the baptism, that day I went home. When I went home, I feel this joy inside of me as if I went, I want something or someone has given me money. I was happy inside of me. Just like that, I feel as if I, I've gotten all that I wanted. Then I noticed that that was the joy of my salvation. Then I was happy. I called my pastor and I told him so many people that I've done my baptism and I'm happy to buy it. Then I praise God for everything because I know that God says in that he takes no pleasure in the death of a sinner. And I know by him keeping me from the time I was a sinner up to this time, from making me to change from my bad ways, he did not want me to perish in my sins. That was why he made me to be one among the people that would come to his family now. And I give him glory for who he is. I praise him for everything. I give thanks and praise to God. Praise the Lord. I thought you would put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. As the Lord is taking the guilt and the condemnation away and washing everybody clean, is also curing those who are sick. Let Antonia speak to you now of the cure the Lord gave her of the problem she had had for 16 years. Sister Antonia, thank you. Please speak to us. My name is Antonia Elijah. I've been suffering from peptic ulcer for past 16 years. And during this period, I can't eat some certain foods, like pepper food, folic acid as medicine, and sometimes even orange, we triggers it. All over my body, I'll be feeling pains and hotness of the body. But during this time of GCK in Mina, as we are preparing, and I have faith that God of all possibilities is going to roll it away. So at the first day, during the time of uh, prayer, after the preaching of the man of God, he said we should lay hands on where we have problem. And I lay my hand on my chest. Whatever is the problem, the challenge, the sickness, the pain, just lay your hand there and raise up the other hand. The name of the sickness does not matter. It's the name of Jesus that matters. And that name will cancel, destroy, all the yokes of the devil out of your life in Jesus' name. And after that prayer, my body was calm. And I say, I want to test it, whether it is true that the Lord has done it. I sent for them to buy pepper's food for me. And I ate the food, nothing. My body was calm. I am okay. Since that time till now, both the uh, body pains and hotness of the body and weakness, everything has gone. I am totally okay. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the man of God, Dr. W. F. Kumui, our big daddy in the Lord. I say may God Almighty bless him in Jesus' name. And everybody said, tonight, You'll be okay. You'll be calm. Every sickness will get out of your life in Jesus' name. Number one is the way out. 
out of transgression and out of tribulation. Number two is the washing for transformation and triumph. Number three now. Number three is the wonder of translation and before the throne. The Lord is going to translate you now. Out of all the problems you have and it's going to grant you total deliverance. Look at Revelation chapter 7 and in verse 15. Therefore, a day before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them when the lord touches and transforms and saves you tonight he'll save you for himself you'll be with him here he'll be with you here and then over there on the other side forever and ever you'll be with the lord the lord will be with you look at verse 16 in verse 16 they shall hunger no more I thought somebody would say amen. <laughs> Neither thirst anymore. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Then in verse 17, it says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes that's what the Lord will do for you tonight and that's what the Lord will continue to do in your life until we see him face to face and then we get to heaven and curse no more hunger no more heat no more problems no more temptation no more and the satan and the demons that are tempting people and doing evil today they are all, all forever bad and they are forever taken into the into the uh, lake of fire and they will not be able to touch your life anymore one year two years ten years a hundred years a thousand years forever and ever you'll be rejoicing the presence of the lord do you want that kind of translation look at colossians chapter one i'm reading from verse 13 in colossians chapter one verse 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness that's what he's going to do today he has delivered others and is delivering you tonight and is going to deliver you as you trust in the lord today who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son then in verse 14 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins they go together God forgives all your sins he doesn't count anything against you he said Jesus bore all your load he bore all your shame he bore all your guilt he bore all your condemnation and because Christ has paid the price and he has borne everything for you it says now you are translated out of guilt into the grace of god out of condemnation into the conversion experience you are translated out of darkness and you come into the light and it happens now when you turn away from your sin and say lord i believe that you died for me and i believe in you now as my savior and as my lord and by your grace i'll keep on following you from now until i get to that yonder place where you yourself will wipe all the tears away from mine eyes your time has come my time has come this final day others have been saved others have been forgiven others have been washed others have been cleansed and this is your opportunity to say yes lord 
I want this. I want to follow the way out of my transgression, out of the trial, the temptation, and tribulation. I know Christ is the way, and I want to follow that way. I want the washing, the washing, the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb that will give me transformation and give me triumph and victory in my life. And I want the wonder, the wonder of your translation so that I'll come before the throne of God. Am I speaking your mind? I said, am I speaking your mind? It's bowed and eyes closed. Your moment has come. The moment of repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you have heard that Jesus is the way. There's no other way. Jesus is the one that grants us the release and the freedom and the salvation out of our iniquities, out of our transgression. There is no other person, there's no other savior. It's bowed, eyes closed. You're giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ now. And you're saying, yes, Lord, I come. I turn away from my sin and I turn to Jesus, my Savior, who paid the whole price for my forgiveness, freedom, and salvation. Wherever you are, you want that salvation, forgiveness now from the Lord. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand and say, Yes, Lord, I am here. This final day of this uh, uh, GCK October, you're saying, uh, Lord, I give myself to you. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. Freedom will come. Salvation will come. Forgiveness will come. The grace of God will come into your life. Final day, final day, final day. Great opportunity. Raise up that hand and stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. A candidate for the salvation of the Lord. God bless you there. God bless you there. This is your chance. This is your chance. So you will get to heaven at last. And Jesus is the way. The only way. And as you trust him and believe him and put all your trust and all your heart on him. Forgiveness salvation has now come as we are standing keep on standing and pray what you are praying for you right now Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your love, we thank you for your mercy, and we thank you because you have said, whosoever will come to you through Christ, you will for no reason cast away. These are raising up their hands here, online, everywhere, and I pray that your salvation will come to them now in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins. Take away all their guilt, all the condemnation. Take away. Let new life be given to them right now. And the spiritual robe of righteousness made white by the washing of the blood of the Lamb give to everyone right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you and God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they'll get all those details from you. After that, I'll come back and pray for your healing final day. Healing for everyone. Our counselors uh, get busy. We'll call on our moderating overseer to help us now. After that, I'll be back to pray for you to have a total supernatural freedom from sickness and from every infirmity. That's it. As simple as that. You have been watched tonight. Keep standing. Keep standing. Please, our brethren, go down quickly. Choristers, leaders, workers, overseers, please, could you go down quickly? Group pastors, to save time. Don't, don't preach. Just their, their data, names, their address, their, their, their phone contacts, and that's it. Quickly, please. Don't, don't hurry them much. 
But yet, you are, you, are, you, are, you are also very careful to be a bit fast. Quickly, quickly. Don't miss anybody out. There's somebody by the fence there. There's some outside the gate, outside the fence. Please, let's go now to get them. Please give your accurate name, phone number, your address, so we can also help you hereafter. It's for your own interest to maintain the faith and get to heaven. Quickly, let's do that quickly. Write legibly, capital letter if possible, and then make sure you get the accurate digits, their phone numbers. Keep standing. What I'm doing here now, do the same thing in Kenya, the same thing, the same thing in Uyo, the same thing in Calabar, same thing in Bayasa, same thing in Aba, same thing everywhere globally, depending on, on the time zone. Please, those outside the gate, can I see hands now? Some are coming to you now by the road. Hands up, please, hands up, hands up. But the railings, railings upstairs there, everywhere. Don't miss something we want to give you now that will keep you standing, keep you heavenly, keep you rapturable, keep you heaven righteous. Hands up, please, hands up, hands up. Go to them, go now. Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. If you've not got in that paper, please hands up. God bless you. God bless you. Wave your hand. Now go now. Go after them. Go after them quickly. Go now. Go now. Go now. God bless you. Go now. Those far, far behind too. The same thing. The same thing. Wave your hand for them to give you the paper. It will help you to stand. You will not pass slides. God will keep you. Quickly now, please. Our data collectors, don't preach. Just their names, their address, their phone number. And then those outside here to the Alpha location, same thing we'll be doing now. Don't just uh, uh, be an observer. What you're doing here now, the same thing you will do everywhere. In, in Kenya, in America, depending on your time zone, in Canada, in Hong Kong, in India, in China. Same thing. It's a global thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, your hands up. The railing, the railing up there, some hands were given. Please go ahead, go ahead. We saw their hands. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. If, if you don't have sleep, tear a paper now because there, there are many there. Tear a clean sheet. Remember, name, read a paper quickly. Tear a, tear a plain sheet somewhere, your diary or something. Name, address, phone number. So don't miss them. Please, quickly, quickly. That's why the pastor came to Bori. You know, after location, with some, some sacrifices made. That's why we are here, majorly. So don't miss them. Quickly, quickly, be patient with them. They can write, write for them. Quickly, ask them questions, the accurate address, their phone numbers, to help them, preserve, to preserve them. Then we have a package for them, the pastor's package for them, which I give them on the sixth, you know, at the bank banquets here in Bori and globally. That's a package, package from the from, from the convener that will help them to sustain them, to keep them, and then we shall baptize them on the on the twelfth and to disciple them also to, to conserve them, to preserve them in the faith. Let me fast, please. Be fast. Those in front of me here, when you are true, let me let, let's indicate to see that they are true. Down, 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 down. Many hands are up, down. Outside the gates, left and right. Let's do that quickly. Don't miss anybody out because they're very precious to the pastor. Go ahead. Don't preach. Don't preach. Just their data, name, address, phone number. And write in capital letters if possible. Make sure that, that the digit is correct. The phone numbers, either ATL or uh, MTN or whatever, or GLOW. Quickly, please. Quickly, please. 
you're, you're not preaching. You're not preaching. Wave your hand. You have not been attended to. Wave your hand. Okay. You stood up. And pastor pray for you. And you're, you're, you're sat down now. Please, can you see your hands up? So that they, will, they, they will locate you. Quickly. 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 Don't miss it. If you miss it, it's not the best for you. Please, let's do that. And you stay there. After the miracle prayer, you bring them out. For testimony tonight, as, you can, as much as you can take. Quickly. Quickly. Quickly, we're waiting for you. The pastor is getting set for the final, final, it's a final, it's a last night. You can't miss tonight. Tomorrow we are no more here. So it's, it's a last chance, if you like. So make sure you are, you are, you are stable. Make, make sure you are focused. You're praying now. Identify the problem. And tonight it will, it will go out it, by God's grace. So please, if you're done, by my, by my right, let's see your hands up. If you're done, that those by the fence they are standing, they, stood, they gave a life to Christ, gave their debtors. All right, you are, you are through there. By my left, your own right, when you are done, let's see your hands. Let's indicate to save time. I'm not seeing down, down now. Down, down now. Let's get there and stay there with them. The camera will get, get there, down, down to capture testifiers. This are coming down to, to, the, to the stage. Don't come out. Choristers, remain with them. So you bring them out to testify tonight. It's a, it's, it's a final night. There's no other night than tonight. This October GCK. The next one, you have seen it. It's not here. It's in the north of the Damawa. Please, let's, let's get them set. When you are done, let's see, let's see your hands to indicate. Okay, am I seeing how down, down, down? All right. Okay, okay, here you're all right. Quickly, let's settle down. Don't, no movements. Just stay there with them if you're hearing me. You stood up and they didn't get you. They, didn't, they, they have not seen you. Can you, can you indicate to them, give you some attention? You stood up, you sat down, and they, didn't, they have not come to you yet. Can you indicate now so that you don't miss out? Is there anybody like that? Okay, check up those hands. Quickly, quickly. Make sure you're thorough. You're thorough. No, no error. No error. I'm sure tonight they will get SMS to guide them what to do next. Remember on the 6th, globally on the 6th, there will be a banquet. You know, a banquet on the 6th of the converts. Then on the 12th also, there will be water baptism for them all globally. Then also we we'll disciple them and then see how to keep them, preserve them in the assembly of brethren. Yes, if you are true, hands up. Okay, I'm seeing a hand there. If you are true, can I see? Yeah, you are right there in the middle. All right, get set now. Get set now for the miracle prayer. I indicate not the problem in your life. Maybe in Tana or Tana. Tonight they will disappear. Okay, please. Can you rise up now? Get up now. Get up now for the pastor is here now for the miracle prayer. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Tonight. Somebody shout, tonight. tonight. That thing there will disappear. Sickness will disappear. That pain will disappear. That growth Fibroid, it will disappear. And all that sin you've been taking there, taking there, taking there, and there was no solution. Tonight, solution has come. You raise up one hand, and you lay the other hand upon yourself. Blind eyes, just lay your hand there. Deaf ears, dumb tongues, limb legs, whatever in the tummy, in the head, anywhere, after the final amen, that miracle will land on you there. 
We're ready now. Heaven is ready for you. Raise up the hand. Online, do the same thing. Your miracle is coming. Any congregation where you are, any part of the country, anywhere you are in Africa, everywhere, lay your hand there now. Raise up the other hand. A miracle has come. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you tonight because we know your power will never fail. And your mercy will never fail. Miracle of mercy tonight. Miracle of compassion tonight. Miracle of the manifestation of your love tonight. Do it for everyone in Jesus' name. From the top of the air to the tip of the toe. We we'll pray, Lord, you manifest your dynamic power. And Lord, I pray that problem in the head vanish away right now in Jesus' name. I pray for all that thing walking about in the body, all the thing, the symptoms of evil powers tormenting you that you have. I command that evil power come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, cancer. I command that cancer now be healed in Jesus' name. Also be healed in Jesus' name. An issue of blood dry up in Jesus' name. Hearing noise in your ear. I pray that noise will stop right now. And the deafness and the dumbness clear out in Jesus name I pray that the power to speak out and then to hear very clearly the Lord grant unto you right now in Jesus name I pray for those who are blind I pray the Lord will touch your blind eyes whatever is covering your sight I pray the Lord touch you right now clear it away in Jesus name blind eyes be opened and begin to see see clear see bright that all the dimness will vanish away in jesus name lord i pray for those who have any pain in their waist and their chain their, in their joints anywhere that arthritis be healed in jesus name with that hand Stretch it out and be whole in Jesus' name. That short leg, the shorter leg to grow out and become equal to the other leg right now in Jesus' name. And those who are paralyzed and impotent in any way, let your strength and your power come into them now. Heal them completely in Jesus' name. And those who have sores in their body, sores under their feet that has not been healed for a long time, I command that sore dry up right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any infirmity, any disease, whatever the name, wherever you are in any part of the body, I command you be healed right now. Set everyone free. Deliver everyone. Miracle of healing and deliverance everywhere in Jesus' name. To the right, miracle. To the left, miracle. At the back, at the center, in front, miracle. Over the walls, receive your miracle now in Jesus' name. Over the radio, over the television, in every congregation, anywhere you are in the world, the Lord is touching you right now. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. The oppression of the Almighty God upon your body right there now. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You have got it. You have got it. I got it. Check up. You'll find a miracle and the healing and deliverance there. Put your hands together. Put your hands together.